What's happening, comic fans? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. In the spirit of our channel and not focusing on the big two, I wanted to talk about my personal favorite universe continuity publisher, whatever you want to call it, Valiant Comics. Uh, they are the bee's knees, in my opinion. Um, I, I absolutely love them. So today I wanted to talk about where to start if you're a new reader, if you've never read any Valiant before. Where do you start? If you're interested in various genres, I'll, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to let you know what you should check out first. Um, if you're a continuity junkie like I am, I'm also going to tell you what to look for. So um, it, it's it, it's going to be a little bit of everything for everyone because that's the great thing about Valiant is if uh, it, you know people are into all kinds of different comics and Valiant has something for you within their universe. And I guarantee you by reading one title, you'll definitely want to read more. Let's dive in. So we're going to do this uh, character at a time, sort of genre at a time. Um, hopefully it'll all make sense. There are too many books. This is not all the books. I have a whole bunch of deluxe editions from Valiant Comics. Um, this is about half of what I've got. I've got about 40 in total um, from my last count. So uh, very cool stuff. I'm very excited to show you guys these. And uh, we're going to start off first with uh, the 2012 reboot, which is all I'm going to be talking about. If anyone's curious, I'm not going to talk about any of the 90s stuff. This is all 2012, the more recent material that they've done uh, and the universe that they've started to craft since that year. So um, let's start off with uh, one of my favorite characters. XO Man of War, uh, Arik of Dacia is also, you know, his, his alter ego, I guess you could say. Um, he is a, a man from the 4th century AD uh, who got caught up with this alien race called the Vine. And in, in 2012, when Valiant uh, rebooted their universe, XO Man of War was one of the first titles out on the shelves. Uh, the first volume, 50 issues, was written by Robert Venditti, um, who, in my opinion, is a very underrated writer. His Exo Man of War run is a, a spectacular, spectacular sci-fi storyline about, again, following this character of Arik as he gets tied up with this alien race called the Vine. Um, and the Vine has this armor that they worship called Shanhara. He ends up wielding this armor. Again, I don't want to spoil much because there's so much uh, great um, detail and, and artistry to the storylines here. Um, but throughout Robert Venditti's run, you get to see the origin of Arik and, and his role as Exo Man War as he comes to the present time as well um, and starts to sort of adapt to the lifestyle, right? Having moved from the 4th century to the present time with this uh, incredibly powerful armor that um, almost has limitless power, Throughout the 50 issues, you get incredible artists like uh, Kerry Nord, Lee Garbett, um, Trevor Hairsign, a whole bunch of spectacular artists doing great, great work. Again, traveling through the years with Arik, seeing him develop as a character, which is a great highlight point um, of the Valiant universe. This character progress and character development, seeing um, characters who at first did not get along start to get along and, and start to build up that camaraderie with each other. Case in point, um, in Exo Manor, where you actually get introduced to Ninjak, um, he doesn't, you know, start off in his own ongoing title, which is another great thing about the Valiant universe is getting introduced to characters um, in one storyline and seeing how the actions in one storyline affect another storyline. And and that's really the most beautiful thing about Valiant Comics is their continuity. And you get to see that really well in Exo Manowar because it's the longest run to date with 50 issues, uh, you know, getting to see uh, him interact in all these various events and seeing all the various events happen. So in front of me, I have five deluxe editions collecting uh, the entire Robert Venditti run. You may notice there's no uh, Exo Man War Deluxe Edition Volume 3. That's because all of that content is uh, contained within this Armor Hunters Deluxe Edition. Of course, guys, I'm very sorry. A lot of these deluxes are out of print, very hard to find. Um, you know, it's been years since they've been out, and uh, they weren't very large print runs. And um, some Volume 1s got reprinted, but those are all uh, out of stock as well now and hard to find. But um, if you can get your hands on them, these deluxes are great. The oversized artwork is awesome. You get a lot of bonus content. You do also get to see Arik. Um, interact with the Unity team. It is during uh, this series and the Unity series written by Matt Kent that you get to see Exo Manowar start develop a camaraderie with these other uh, members within the Valiant universe. And you start to see a superhero team form in a, in a universe that doesn't necessarily feel um, like, a, like a Marvel or a DC universe with capes and, and cowls and tights and all that. It's a, it's a very different aesthetic and, and atmosphere and it's a, a lot more mature in my opinion and even a more, more realistic. I know all of these, you know, um, alien technologies and superpowers and stuff are kind of crazy, but um, I think it's handled really well in Valiant without being too cheesy or feeling too much like a superhero comic. 
once you're done with Robert Venditti's run, I highly recommend checking out a Matt Kintz run. Started in 2017, ran for about 26 issues or so. Uh, absolutely gorgeous run. It follows, uh, you know, what happens after Robert Venditti's run. Arik is trying to find himself. He's traveled off to a distant alien planet, and he's begun a life there. He started to live there, and um, we find out why he's left and, and what made him leave Earth. Um, and we also get to see how he sort of progresses as a character further and further, right? On this alien planet, we see him rise in ranks as he's thrown into this war um, and, and, and in this this world that basically has a civilization that's um, always at war with itself, right? All these different cultures fighting against each other, and Arik is trying to put a stop to that and trying to make things better. Um, and learning along the way that it's not as simple as he thinks. So again, seeing that awesome character progression. And now in 2020, we have Dennis Hopeless starting a run on Exo Man, where the first issue came out right before the whole uh, you know Diamond distribution stopped due to the, the quarantine. Um, so be sure to check that out as well. The great thing about Valiant and all these Exo titles is you can jump in to either one of these series, although I don't recommend jumping into the middle of a run necessarily. Um, I do recommend reading, you know, if you want to read Matt Kint's run, you don't want to go back and read the Robert Venditti stuff. You can do that. The Matt Kint Deluxe Editions are still available. Two volumes collects the entire run. Um, and then uh, as well, if you just want to start with the Dennis uh, Hopeless stuff, by all means, you can do that too. Um, so there, there's a lot of great options. And, and that's, you know, moving forward with the entirety of this video, right? Anytime I mention a new run on a character, you can usually feel free to jump in right there if you don't want to go back and read it from the very beginning. Um, unless I mention something other, otherwise and you really want to be a continuity junkie like I do. Ah, Bloodshot time, Bloodshot. Bloodshot is another wonderful Valiant character. Also started uh, with his own ongoing series in 2012 with the reboot, written by Dwayne Straczynski, um, with artwork by a whole troupe of amazing, amazing artists. The first volume of Bloodshot ran for 25 issues total, um, with issues 14 through 22 actually be, being called Bloodshot and Hardcore, at which point Bloodshot joins a team called the Hardcore. So who is Bloodshot? Bloodshot uh, was created by a company called Project Rising Spirit. Uh, he's a man a man of mystery um, who it goes by the name Ray Garrison, uh, but really, you know, one of the mysteries behind Bloodshot is who he really is, who he was before all of this. Project Rising Spirit, whenever they send him on a mission, they download, um, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, they download a uh, basically a program into his brain that uh, drives his motivations for this mission, right? And um, you get to see that, you know, prominently within this first volume as, as Bloodshot sort of finding out that he's being manipulated um, as he, you know, has his own side informant and he starts to, you know, break away from Project Rising Spirit. He gets involved with the Harbingers, which I'll be talking about a little later, um, and gets involved in Harbinger Wars, which was one of the events in the Valiant Universe that I'll be talking about in a little bit as well. So you get to see Bloodshot again interacting with a whole bunch of characters the same way Exo interacted with Ninjak and Unity. Uh, which is great. It's an action-oriented storyline uh, with a little bit of a thriller side to it, right? Trying to figure out who Bloodshot is, what's really going on at Project Rising Spirit, what secrets are hiding behind the, their locked doors. Uh, it's really fascinating. There are a lot of great side characters that help Bloodshot. Of course, his nanites are also a character within the story as they begin to communicate with him. And the nanites give him a really cool power set. He needs protein to power them, but, you know, he can uh, disguise himself. He can uh, manipulate his his shape, um, technology. It's very, very cool. And right after that, we had uh, Bloodshot Reborn by uh, the fantastic, fantastic Jeff Lemire, one of his best works ever, in my opinion. But again, we're following Ray Garrison as he's trying to figure out who he is, um, trying to figure out if it matters, getting past that sort of depression that, that comes with, you know, the loss of identity and loss of self. Um, really, really fantastic psychological um, analysis of a character like Ray Garrison in Bloodshot, um, which, you know, Jeff Lemire had been doing at the time a, a lot in his books with Moonlight, Moon Knight and Old Man Logan. Uh, beautiful, beautiful artwork in this book by Louis LaRosa. I mean, just s some of the most stunning artwork you'll ever see in your life. And uh, it's a really great piece, very dark and gloomy, as opposed to the high speed action oriented run uh, with the first volume. And then um, Jeff Lemire also did write Bloodshot Salvation, which was brilliant. Um, there's a lot of time travel involved here too. So it's not just present day, you're getting to see the future as well, which is always fun. It's something great that Valiant does. They'll do a four issue arc in the future that does end up showing up in a storyline later on. It's brilliant. Again, I don't want to spoil too much because this is really a testament to how to do continuity correctly. Things that happen from issue one, making their way all the way through years and years later, um, leaving a significant impact. Again, little details that a writer will leave behind for future writers to pick up and expand on. It's it's beautiful. It's a, 
it's a great little craft. It's sort of like um, like the Commandy Challenge uh, was a book that was recently done where each writer would sort of lead the next writer into an impossible situation that Commandy had to get out of this huge cliffhanger where you're like, there's no way Commandy's going to survive this. And the, the next writer would have to take on that challenge. So it's great to see that here on a large scale, you know, spanning years and years. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and each writer adds their own little twist and flavor to the character. Again, you're seeing a character progress. The core of the character is, it remains the same, but all these writers add a new element and a new layer of depth to the character which um, really again helps build the continuity and your connection um, and empathy towards a character it's fantastic and in 2019 for those of you that want to get into the most recent stuff you can absolutely jump right into bloodshot the 2019 series by tim seeley with brett booth on artwork um, i've reviewed the first two volumes of it it's great it's a lot of fun um, i don't like it as much as i did the, the the first you know these set of books the jeff lemire and the dwayne Straczynski runs, but it's still fantastic, a lot of fun, and uh, Bloodshot is always a good time. Harbingers. Harbingers is a, a corner of the Valiant universe that at times I think does not get enough love. Uh, you know, we, it, we've we recently seen multiple things happening with the Valiant universe and other mediums like the Bloodshot movie and the Ninjak versus the Valiant universe, a uh, little mini that was done. Th that was a great time, a really, really fun time. Um, but Harbinger was nowhere to see, nowhere, nowhere to be seen. The characters from Harbinger, rather, were nowhere to be seen in any of it. And uh, Harbinger is essentially the mutant equivalent of the Valiant universe. You've got a group of characters, these these people who uh, are, are called Psyots. They have a, a psychic ability to to do something, right? Whatever it may be, create a force field, uh, transform into an animal. Um, you know, manipulate matter, uh, fire, strength, uh, mental projections, things like that, all kinds of power sets. And um, really the story follows this. It starts off with this character named Peter Stanchek and, uh, and his friend Joe, and you start to see him pick up friends along the way. Well, friends, um, <laughs> no one really likes Peter. It's a, it's a very dark book, Harbinger, even though it, it focuses again around these teens, these young adults. It's a very dark book about really a bunch of renegades and rebels and anarchists who don't belong, obviously, with th these these powers that, you know, at times they can't control that have really drastically affected their lives. Um, you know, for Peter, for example, he's got a serious drug problem. That's one of the uh, character arcs you get to see throughout the storyline is him dealing with this drug issue um, and finding strength through his friends and, and his friends finding strength through him. Everyone's got their own insecurities that they're dealing with and they all they all feel uh, weak and powerless alone even though they've got these powers but as a group when they become the renegades they're you know they're they're, they're unstoppable they're on the run they're they're doing crazy things it's so much fun joshua dysart really crafted something unique and extraordinary um in the in the first two volumes with um with Harbinger. I mean, it, it, it's truly, you know, Joshua Dysart is one of those writers I don't see too often. I've read his Unknown Soldier and I loved it. But what he did with Harbinger is is truly spectacular. Um, if the X-Men were ever written this well, I would probably enjoy those titles, <laughs> but I don't. Uh, this is a very, again, a more realistic and mature look at, at, at kids in a situation like this and world in a situation like this, right? And of course, you got to have a big bad. And in this case, it is a man called uh, Toyo Harada who runs the Harbinger Foundation. Um, and, and basically, Toyo Harada is, you know, he's a super, super powerful Psyot, and um, he's he's such an intricate intricate character you get to see his origin what he's been through in his life what's made him become the man that he is making the decisions that he does and particularly in imperium which follows uh harbinger written by joshua dysart as well you get to see toyo harada move uh you know sort of start to take over the world it's really 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 fascinating you get to see again new characters show up new psyots and you're sort of rooting for the bad guys at this point again joshua dysart just makes everything so compelling and it's very hard for you to hate a man who's been through what toyo hard has been through i don't want to spoil much uh there's so much going on in these titles it's fantastic you're getting to see things in the past in the present in the future um it's great. I can't recommend the Joshua Dysart stuff enough. It's so, so excellent. Some of the characters that were involved in the Harbinger series also did get spin-off series, like Faith. Um, I only have this deluxe edition, but Faith did have two uh, series. It started in 2016, this first one. It was a four-issue mini-series to set the stage, and then she got her own ongoing series that went for about 16 issues, all 20 issues or however many it was were written by Jody Hauser with amazing artists. Um, Faith is a great character. Um, she's, you know, 
she's just so happy to be able to be part of this group and have these abilities and feel uh you know again like she belongs somewhere like she's part of something bigger than uh, the monotony of an, a normal regular everyday life and it's really beautiful to again see her grow and mature uh, and, and gain confidence and change her perception it's really 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 wonderful so after all of this stuff has happened um you know we have imperium and then we've got generation zero and Harbinger Renegade. So Harbinger Renegade is sort of the spiritual successor to the original Harbinger uh, series, where you start seeing, is that a book fall? Um, <laughs> you start seeing uh, some of these characters return and new characters get introduced to the world. It was written by Rafer Roberts. Um, it wasn't too great. It ran for about nine issues total. Again, he did leave little bits and pieces for writers to, to you know, play around with in the future, which is kind of cool. But um, overall, it wasn't uh, too satisfying for me, especially relative to the dice art stuff. And then and in Generation Zero, you get to see some other psyops that got introduced earlier on in Joshua Dice Art's run during the Harbinger War uh, phase of the, the series, which was an event that crossed over with Bloodshot. Again, I'm going to talk events a little later, but Generation Zero was absolutely uh, fantastic. I loved it. It was so much fun. Eight issues um, written by Fred Van Lente. It's a, an absolute blast. Francis Portella on artwork, Andrew Dalhouse colors. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. You get to, again, learn about these new characters Cronus uh, it's just fantastic it's a nice great group of characters and again things just because they're younger characters does not mean things go well it had a very new mutants vibe with the sort of horror aspect to it and the thriller aspect to it um, I really really enjoyed it uh, Generation Zero was a great time most recent I guess Psy Art related title that that came out was called Secret Weapons which introduced even more Psyots to the Valiant universe, a few more, four more to be specific, um, led by Livewire. And I should mention who Livewire is. Livewire is a another amazing, amazing Valiant character. She is a woman who used to, um, started off working with Toyo Harada, and uh, again, progressed, became her own woman, and found out what it is she needed uh, to do to make herself feel like she's doing the right thing in life. So you get to see Livewire Amanda McKee, you get to see her uh, again, ra help these these new Psyots and, and eventually lead into a Harbinger Wars 2, which again, we'll get into a little later. But Livewire did also have her own ongoing series written by Vita Ayala that ran for 12 issues, which was actually a fantastic time as well. Um, it's great to see these spin-off titles happening, you know, running 12 issues. It's really fun. And Livewire... Uh, was also part of the unity team she is uh, just an incredibly compelling character and uh, ridiculously powerful she is so cool to see in action unfortunately the harbinger universe is not the easiest one to get into uh, starting off with the 2012 reboot of course is the best option you might be able to read imperium and get, uh, get uh you know figure things out and understand what what's going on i think but harbinger renegade um you probably would not appreciate much without reading the original harbinger run and generation zero could be actually a good time for a new reader because you're not overly familiar with these characters uh, throughout the Harbinger series. So Generation Zero is really where you get to see them in depth and, and get to explore their personalities. So that's another one that you could just dive into if you wanted to get a quick little taste. Horror and Supernatural fans rejoice. Valiant has something for you as well, and it goes by the name of Shadow Man and Dr. Mirage. Shadow Man was uh, also one of the first characters to get an ongoing series in 2012. Fortunately, the first deluxe edition was out of print before I could get my nasty little hands on it. So uh, unfortunately, I just have volume two, but Shadow Man wasn't one of the highlights of the Valiant universe for me, but I really did enjoy it for what it was. It ran for about 20 issues, 16 in the main Shadow Man series with uh, Shadow Man End Times following it up and a few one shots along the way. Um, one of the great things that Shadow, Ma Shadow Man did do is introduce the character Punk Mambo, who I've really, I have really, really, really come to enjoy a lot. Uh, she shows up in Ninjak. She had her own mini series written by Colin Bunn that was a lot of fun. Um, Shadow Man most recently was written by Andy Diggle. Uh, he wrote about, about 13 issues, which was really, really fantastic. You get to see Jack Boniface. Um, you know, deal with a, a great foe of his, um, and you get to see uh, him explore the dead side a little more. And so Shadow Man is a character who, um, it's based in New Orleans, um, so there's a whole bunch of voodoo involved with it, which is great. I love the theme so, so much. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's so much fun, right? It's such a unique vibe, the whole New Orleans feel. Um, and it's great because he explores this thing called the dead side. He has a connection to it. It's sort of like the green um, or the red in the DC universe, but it's all about the undead. And um, it, within there, you get to see all these various characters like Baron Samdi, 
Um, and then, of course, Master Dark is a huge, huge factor in the supernatural side of the Valiant universe. A huge, ominous character. Um, really, really badass. But uh, Shadow Man's great for that. A very mature book. Again, horror, supernatural. If that's what you're into, Shadow Man is for you. Um, Andy Diggle had a great little run uh, exploring Jack Boniface a little more and dealing with Baron Samdi and the dead side a little more. Dr. Mirage is a, a character that I really enjoy as well. I know Matt digs her too. Um, her husband is essentially a ghost and she's, uh, you know, she's able to communicate with him, access the dead side, um, all sorts of things like that. And so this story takes place in the dead side. Um, and she also did have a six issue miniseries mo uh, very recently. I think it was last year. Uh, that was quite fun. I'm very excited for the future of Shadow Man. Colin Bunn uh, is going to be doing a run soon with John Davis Hunt on artwork. Cannot wait for that. Um, I'm very, very excited. Supernatural fans, look no further than these titles. Uh, the variety of Valiant. Oh, man, I just love this company so much. In front of me, I've got deluxe editions collecting stories based on the Annie Pada brothers. The, the Annie Pada brothers. There are three of them. There is Ivar, there is Gilad, and there is Aram. And... Uh, they are all prominent parts of the Valiant universe, thankfully. For uh, I won't give away their origin, but something happened that gave all three of them uh, immortality um, and a little bit of something else as well. Gilad is the eternal warrior. Uh, there were, he was introduced, um, I believe it was in Exo Manowar, and then he got his own ongoing series written by Greg Pak, which only ran for eight issues. But again, beautifully set up this future, this 4000 um, AD timeline where uh, Gilad was, you know, this eternal emperor. Really, really cool stuff. Um, Peter Milligan, I believe, also did a little three issue storyline called Fist and Steel with the Eternal Warrior, which is great. But Wrath of the Eternal Warrior, written by Robert Venditti, again, killer storyline, really, really fantastic, showing the struggles that Gilad goes through as the Eternal Warrior, which is his title. He is the fist and steel of the Earth. He is tasked with the the, the task of protecting the Geomancer. The Geomancer is a character um, chosen by Mother Earth to sort of be the protector of the Earth and to keep the balance um, of the Earth. And it's a really fantastic concept. You get to see Gilad over the years how he's dealt with tragedy tragedy in his life, having to deal with losing loved ones. Of course, since he is immortal and people die around him and the things he goes through to come back to life, to be the immortal, the eternal warrior that he is. Oh, it's amazing. And again, he's in multiple timelines. You get to see him in Rye, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And you get to see him in the past. It's awesome. It's really, really cool. A fun concept. He is one of the brothers, probably the most serious one. Um, let's get to the silly guys here. Archer and Armstrong. So Armstrong is Aram Anipada. He is the uh, one of the three brothers as well, and he's a uh, he likes to drink. Um, him and this, this this guy named Archer. Archer was he belonged to a cult. He was put on this sacred mission to find the savior, and he wound up finding Armstrong. And it turns out he didn't like him very much. And uh, by by <laughs> incredible consequences and circumstances, they wind up teaming up together. And and Armstrong starts showing Archer the ways of the real world. It's fantastic. There are bar fights. There are insane adventures. It's an Indiana Jones type of title. So much fun with a stupendous duo. They run into Bloodshot. They run into Quantum and Woody. It's so much fun. They run into the Eternal Warrior. Oh, it's such a blast to read. It's uh, definitely the lighter side of the Valiant universe and a ton of fun to explore as you're dealing with cults and sects and... and sects and uh, ancient history and it's so much fun such a great time and lastly there's Ivar the Time Walker a 12 issue run by Fred Van Lente which uh followed the third brother Ivar Ivar is a time traveling uh he, he's a time traveler that's what he is and it's so so damn cool again to see moments um from other titles like Archer and Armstrong where Ivar has shown up being referenced in Ivar's own ongoing and to get to see all these brothers interact with each other within their stories as they run into each other by coincidence on purpose it, it's so much fun it's truly a, a wonderful side of the Valiant universe I love the Annie Patter brothers you can jump in with um, any of the Archer and Armstrong rungs unfortunately I don't have the first volume uh, of the the original series but that was a fantastic time written by Fred Van Lente um, and then uh, you know Eternal Warrior you could start reading with Wrath of the Eternal Warrior you do not need to read the Greg Pak stuff, um, but I highly recommend it because it's a good time. And a and was written by Rafer Roberts. It's also a wonderful time. Um, again, I didn't enjoy it as much as the Fred Van Lente original run, but uh, it's still a fantastic time of getting to see the, the two characters, again, progress over time. Archer's teaching Armstrong things. Armstrong is teaching Archer things. Archer also, I should mention, uh, he is able to 
pretty much mastered he's mastered every single style of fighting and what's really cool is when you see them fighting you'll get a little description of what move he's using what sort of martial art it's from very fun stuff uh, i really love these characters and uh, you can really jump in at any point with them um that's the best part if you're looking for a good time quantum and woody just look here don't look anywhere else quantum and woody are a duo they are two brothers the hendersons and um unfortunately they have to clank their uh, their bands together once a day, once every 24 hours, otherwise they will both disintegrate. Don't want to spoil how this happened to them. Don't want to spoil who else was involved with it because it's a lot of fun. Uh, these guys are absolutely hilarious. Um, Quantum is the more serious superhero type looking character and Woody is very silly, always trying to have a good time, um, you know, always trying to ha have a little drink, have some fun. Uh, it's an absolute blast. It's a book that literally had me laughing out loud multiple, multiple times. Um, it's stupendously hilarious. In volume two particularly, there is a miniseries um, included in here called The Delinquents, uh, in which Quantum and Woody team up with Archer and Armstrong, and there is not a funnier comic on the planet, I promise you. I promise you. James Asmus um, absolutely destroys writing Quantum and Woody. So, so funny. Um, I really, really love the first volume of Quantum and Woody. And the second volume of Quantum and Woody is <sighs> nothing nothing to look down upon, man. Daniel Kibblesmith, um, uh, Elliot Ray Hall crushed it. Uh, Daniel Kibblesmith had a really good thing going. I'm not sure what happened. It seemed like uh, he, he would have had a longer run, but maybe, uh, I don't know if he got drafted over to Marvel or what, but either way, he started things off with a, a, a very light story. Again, tying these brothers together closer and having them all both evolve and, and deal with the situation that they're in. And then Elliot Rahal brought a lot of emotional hits towards the second end of that run. And um, seeing the two characters again grow as they've gone through huge difficulty seriously like they go through some uh, very serious situations and, and, and together through their brotherhood um, and through the fact that even though they're not blood brothers um, family's family and and they stick together and they have a good time doing it too it's absolutely wonderful i love quantum and woody some of the funniest uh superhero comics you'll ever read oh ninjack ninjack is a great time ninjack was uh a big part of the Valiant universe before he even gets his own ongoing title. His ongoing title was started in about 2016, written by Matt Kent, uh, with artists like Clay Mann working on it. It's a, an absolutely breathtaking book. Juan Jose Rip as well. Amazing, 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 amazing stuff. Um, Colin King is uh, the man behind the mask. He works for MI6. He is a British ninja spy who's super wealthy. Um, he is the Batman of the Valiant universe, and he is a complete and utter badass. And not only, again, in his ongoing title, but in any time he shows up, you know it's going to be a great issue because uh, a ninjack brings the heat. He's packed with amazing technology. Uh, he's got incredible fighting prowess. And quite frankly, he's he says some incredibly hilarious witty things. And um, he, he's just brilliantly deep as well at the same time. Um, you get to see him interact with a whole bunch of characters within the Valiant universe, and in his ongoing series, you get to see a little bit more behind the scenes uh, f from his origin, the training that he went through, um, and what's what's going on to, with him now, right? The, the introspective part of him, the relationship he, relationships he's in, and how he uh, feels towards other characters within the Valiant universe and his life, um, and how he deals with being Ninjak on a day-to-day -day basis. Aside from the run by Matt Kent, Chris Doss Gage did do a great Ninja K run. Um, you can start with either one of them. I do highly recommend the Matt Kent run, though, because it's it's absolutely brilliant. Not to downplay Chris Doss Gage's Ninja K at all. I don't want to at all because it's fantastic, too, getting to see the history behind all the ninja characters within MI6 is, is marvelous. And he's got some... Uh, incredible dialogue in there as well. I love how badass uh, Christos Gage made uh, Colin King, but I, I really love the Matt Kent run. Anything anything Ninjak you read in the Valiant universe, though, is guaranteed to be a good time. He was also part of the Unity team and has showed up in pretty much every event. For all you sci-fi fans, I did recommend this title as one of my top five sci-fi series to check out, Rye by Matt Kent. So, so spectacular. Rye in total ran for 16 issues, with uh, uh, ending with a, a mini-series called 4001 AD, which was sort of an event, um, which I will talk about a as my last little topic after these few books. But Rye takes place in 4001 AD. So again, you're looking at the future here. Now, what's really cool about Rye is you don't see too many other characters from the Valiant universe until 4001 AD. And what's even cooler about that is that 
Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a storyline in Bloodshot that takes place in the future. There's a storyline in Eternal Warrior that takes place in the future. See what I'm going see where I'm going with this? This is exactly why I love the Valiant universe. This Rise series leads to 4001 AD. The events of 4001 AD lead to an event called Fallen World. That Fallen World event ties in with the Bloodshot storyline. Um, the Fallen World event leads to the new ongoing Rise series that's being written by Dan Abnett with artwork by the sensational Juan Jose Rip. That ties into that Eternal Warrior storyline that I was telling you about. I mean, it's... It's absolutely flawless. Again, it doesn't feel like a superhero comic at all, but the way the continuity is respected and cherished by the creators um, as a fan, it's, it, it, I respect it so much. I love it so much. Um, the, this art series is drawn by Clayton Crane for the most part as well, um, with Cafu doing uh, the Rye series tied to the 4001 AD event. In 4001 AD, we'll talk about events in a little bit. Seriously, if you're a fan of sci-fi, I can't recommend Rye enough. Beautiful artwork. Um, amazing, amazing storyline about sort of a, a futuristic society run by an artificial intelligence. Highly recommend it with stunning artwork. Continuing the Valiant praise. Valiant also does a lot of fun stuff with characters that honestly don't really even tie into the, the rest of the universe at all. I mean, it's almost to the point where it's like Valiant was just a publisher who let this creator make their own creator own comic and publish it through Valiant. Um, so starting with Britannia, I spoke about this in my uh, top five fantasy read. It follows a, t a character called Antonius Axia, who is the first uh, detective, the detectioner of, uh, of humankind, I guess. It's 60 AD, and he has been blessed with, uh, blessed with the, the knowledge of um, investigation. It's really cool. Beautiful artwork by Juan Jose Rip and Robert Gill, written by Peter Milligan. There are three miniseries here, um, each following a different story that Antonius, uh, uh, you know, finds himself in. It's really wonderful. Doesn't really tie into the rest of the Valiant universe at all. So if you're looking for a great fantasy, mystery, you know, medieval story, Britannia. It's fantastic. And then you've got a title like Divinity. Divinity started off as a four-issue mini about a character who, um, goes out into space, comes back rocking it like Dr. Manhattan, pretty much, uh, with a cool space outfit on, though, and things really expand from there. It was written by Matt Kent with artwork by Trevor Hairsign. There were three miniseries, Divinity 1, 2, and then Divinity 3, Stalinverse, which was really cool, really, really cool, and you get to see um, different characters from the Valiant universe under this Stalinverse now, so Exo Manowar is a uh, uh, a commu he, you know, he's got a communist look to him. It's very, very cool. I can't recommend Divinity enough. It's very trippy, sort of dealing with time and space and, um, and the comic book as, a, a, as a way for the characters to travel through the story as well. It's very, very well done. Um, anything by Matt Kent in the Valiant Universe is fantastic. Um, but this does, you do get to see Divinity interact with other Valiant Universe characters, but thankfully this entire series can be read standalone, um, without knowing anything about the other characters. And Matt Kent, the brilliant man that he is, um, introduces you to even, you know, the other Valiant Universe characters within pages here. It's fantastic. Lastly, the Valiant, I mentioned this briefly, was uh, a four-issue mini by Jeff Lemire, Matt Kent, um, and Paulo Rivera, focusing on the entire Valiant Universe as they deal with this huge menacing threat. Um, it's a really wonderful story. This is another story you could just dive into, read the four issues. You'll get a, a little bit of an idea of all the characters, and you can sort of decide which one you want to go after or pursue. Um, it's fantastic. It's really great. This is a, a, a very great way to introduce someone to the Valiant universe as a whole. So a little bit about the events in the Valiant universe. Um, the problem with the Valiant universe, the only problem, um, and it's a very small problem to have, is that the events, since the uh, Valiant is very continuity ba based, the events do require crossover reading. Um, you know, it won't make sense to you to read some of the bloodshot issues that tie into Harbinger Wars. You're going to wonder what's happening because each issue uh, each character's movement is tracked throughout each issue in the storyline very precisely, um, which is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, so the first event was Harbinger Wars. Um, this was a, an event that crossed over between the Harbinger War miniseries, which was four issues long, um, Harbinger itself, and Bloodshot. The it's a great story about how Bloodshot, you know, is finding finding these kids and trying to help them. You've got Toyo Harada getting involved. You're seeing these kids and how they're dealing with it. You get introduced to new psyots in it. It's really wonderful, and it, again, sets the stage for new characters and progress within the universe. That's really, really wonderful. Um, after that, there was an event called Armor Hunters, which... Um, was was stupendous. It was an Exo Manowar and Unity crossover event. Unity was the superhero team. 
title within the Valiant Universe written by Matt Kent, a spectacular series as well. That one's a little challenging to get into, though, because you do need some background info on the characters. But um, Armor Hunters was uh, about this these invaders that come to steal Shanhara from Exo Mana War, and seeing all these characters work together and the insanity that happens, there are some significant impacts from this event. Devastation. I mean, devastation in the Valiant Universe. It's, it's, it's incredible, and it's something that leaves a huge impact on the Valiant Universe moving forward for multiple arcs. Um, really wonderful stuff. And then there's an event like Book of Death, which um, anyone can really jump into. It's a, a, a supernatural storyline that sort of focuses around the Eternal Warrior um, and, and this guy named Master Dark. Really wonderful. You get to see um, sort of the, the deaths of all the various characters, Bloodshot, Exo, and all that. Um, and then the main storyline leads into the Wrath of the Eternal Warrior storyline. So if you want to bridge the gap there and get a little more info after reading Wrath of the Eternal Warrior, you can go back to Book of Death or vice versa. After Book of Death, go to Wrath of the Eternal Warrior. And then lastly, 4001 AD um, obviously was very much impacted uh, by the Rai series um, and impacted the Rai series. But it also led to the mini called Fallen World and the new Rai ongoing. So a very cool cross over event as well um, not the easiest event to get into really the only one that's easy to get into is book of death um, and then harbinger wars 2 followed up after the secret weapon mini series that i spoke about earlier um, and, and the ramifications of uh, of live wire's actions like i said live wire was uh, toyo Harda's right hand woman and she became a super tank badass who uh, did some really devastating stuff in harbinger wars 2 and again it really left an impact on her and the Valiant Universe and what all the other characters within the Valiant Universe now think of her and how they treat her. Really brilliant stuff. Um, also a difficult event to get into. If you read Secret Weapons, you could read Se uh, Harbinger War 2 and you'll be fine. Um, but it does involve the entire Valiant Universe. Now, of course, there are a few more miniseries and titles that I haven't mentioned. I can't mention all of them. I also uh, don't want to spoil all of it for you because some of the titles may give things away. But hopefully that's enough of an introduction for you guys. Hopefully you now know what sort of characters you're interested in, what kind of flavor you're looking for. If you guys have any questions about any of the characters or want even more detail about something in specific, hit us up down in the comments below. Um, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Dr. Squatch with the link down in the description below. You'll get free shipping. They offer soaps men's health care and grooming products, hand sanitizer, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and with the link down in the description below, you get free shipping for the entirety of your subscription. So check that out. And check out our Patreon if you're interested in hardcover comic giveaways, omnibuses, absolutes, deluxe editions, digital codes. It's fun. It's a good time. Link down in the description uh, below for more details. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. This was uh, quite a long video for me. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you stuck around so far. I did, I did want to you know, give Valiant the love and attention it deserves. They're a wonderful company that I think a lot of people have let slip under the radar. If you're big on continuity, you need, you, this is, it's the best universe for you to look. And now you've got close to a decade of catching up to do, which is wonderful. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all very much for tuning in. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. You stay classy, Internet.